Yeah, I'm good. How about you? Well, it's very early in the morning here in Argentina, but I'm very excited about this interview. And I was um, saying to the audience that this is a podcast dedicated to martial arts, uh, fitness, and wellness. It's basically a podcast uh, that is supposed to be in Spanish, but uh, all our guests until now are uh, native English speakers. So uh, we'll put subtitles on the um, video when we post, post it in YouTube or on Instagram and other networks. So, uh, well, uh, thank you for being here. And uh, I wanted to start uh, about, uh, when did you start uh, training martial arts? It's probably about 20 years ago now. So um, I actually did a little bit of boxing when I was a kid, but I should go early 20s, maybe when I was 20, I got into it and I started with uh, Thai boxing, so Muay Thai, and then, you know, I did that for, that's been almost 20 years so, um, and then uh, after a while there's you no know, weapons or anything and um, no real joint locking so then I moved to uh, to mix martial arts just to mix uh, some takedowns in and uh, you know mix some joint lock in train there and you know I, I've been doing that for about six and a half years now but my journey probably started maybe almost 20 years ago now oh excellent and did you fight in uh, uh, Muay Thai pro fighting yeah I did I had a couple of fights maybe five maybe six Muay Thai fights and then um then I went to Penchak Salat so I probably had about 15 Penchak Salat fights now so yeah so probably just over 20 fights altogether so um I actually represented Australia in the in the World Championships, um, 2016 uh, in Penchak Salat. So um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so probably just over 20 now. So, oh, did you fight uh, uh, in Thailand or in Australia? Uh, I had a couple of fights in Thailand. I had a couple of fights in Australia, and I've had a few fights in uh, Indonesia as well. Oh, also, no, but I, I but I mean uh, Muay Thai. Thailand and Australia. Oh, and Australia. Oh, excellent. Uh, okay, uh, Guru. Uh, well, what do um, you tell us? Uh, what is uh, uh, Salat? What is it's an art form from Indonesia, and what it, it, its background comes from? What, what is uh, Penjaksalat? Can you, hear me? can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> Penchak Salad, um, it's actually a quite interesting history. So, uh, yeah, it's been around for, you know, you're probably talking, you know, could be a thousand, one and a half thousand years. It's quite hard, actually hard, quite hard to trace back its origins. But, but for, you know, a couple of hundred years ago, uh, the, the Dutch actually invaded Indonesia and actually... Uh, you know, basically, it used to be called the Dutch East Indies. So for you know, a couple of hundred years, it was actually under Dutch rule. And um, Penchak Salad actually was disguised as a dance. So very much like Capoeira in Brazil, they disguised it as a dance, which is why the, 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 the style is very flowing. It's very, a lot of kind of uh, flowing movement. They actually disguised it as a dance. Right. And actually, at the end, of the, the end of the Second World War, they actually rose up and, and used Penchak Salad to, to gain their independence. It actually officially became a sport after the end of the Second World War. So, so basically, you will see a lot more of Penchak Salat now in Indonesia. But they actually tried to hide the style for, for quite a while because of a. It was called the Dutch East Indies, but now they're independent, and you know it's it's called Indonesia. So, and Penchak Salat because it's it's based from warfare. It's actually been used in wars. They've actually won wars by using it. So it's it's got its uh, roots in in history, and uh, it's got a weapon system too. So you've got your striking. So you know, or you kind of striking, it's no rules. So you can basically use any strike you want. Obviously when you get to competition, there's rules, but you know, your, your striking is basically no rules. It's, um, it's got a locking and breaking. So uh, more like your, tr your traditional Japanese jujitsu, it's your stand up locking and breaking because, you know, if you're in a, if you're in a war, you basically don't want to mess around too, too long with someone on the ground. So you will try and lock, break, move on to the next person. So the stand up and locking is a bit more like your traditional Japanese jujitsu. And, 
lot of uh, throws, like takedowns, a lot of uh, hip tosses, things like that. So a lot of takedowns involved. And the art form, so basically, uh, obviously, they disguise the style as a dance. So the art form is, is a very big part of Penchak Salat. So it's very dance-like in, in its movement. And the, the quite unique thing about Penchak Salat as well is that the movement transfers over to weapons. So you might, you might use a movement in the art form like this, but then if you have a weapon, that could be a cut like that. So basically the, the art form and the movement crosses over to weapons. So it's not like, say, some styles where you have to learn open hand and then you have to change your movement for weapons. The movement actually transfers over to, to weapons. So you can use the same movement, whether that's for attacking with weapons, self-defense, things like that. So the movement crosses over uh, basically to all the different aspects of, of, of Silat. So um, you've got many different aspects. Um, obviously the sports as well, so the sports really you've got more striking, you know, take down, catching, dropping, sweeping. So the sports aspect is uh, it's point based, you know, a punch is one point, kick two points, a sweep, a lot of scissor sweeps, that's worth three points. And then uh, catching and dropping, so catching someone's leg, taking them down, that, that's worth four points, that's, that's maximum points. So basically that's why you'll see a lot of catching, dropping, sweeping and takedowns in Salat because that's the highest scoring point. So, so it's a very diverse style. Um, it's, it's probably one of the mo most diverse styles out there and everything goes back to the weapon system and the fact that it's, you know, it, it's built for warfare, so. It's, it has been proven in, in war, so it's very uh, an, effective, an effective arm for uh, war form. So uh, it's something very distinctive about uh, Penjak Silat is that it's a weapons-based uh, martial art. Uh, can yeah. you tell us how how did you start training? Do you, do you start with uh, the, um, the, I mean, empty hand uh, training or with weapons? Because in Filipino martial arts, you uh, usually start with weapons and then with empty yeah. hands. Yep. Yeah. So uh, um, with uh, there's a lot of different styles of salat. So in Indonesia, uh, and there's over. That's just in Indonesia. Indonesia alone so the styles of sat so that can vary a lot so Indonesian style usually starts with an uh, open hand so um you will have heard of styles like a uh, Kali so that's the more Filipino style they actually start with sticks so that's predominantly stick fighting so right. the Filipino styles uh, start with weapons like Kali they'll start with sticks or start with knives Indonesian hand and they'll actually apply weapons afterwards and then you use that same movement and add weapons on top of that. So basically some styles of Salat, like Carlisian style of Salat, uh, mostly uh, start with open hand and, and then move to weapons afterwards. And the very, um, a very interesting fact about your um, style is that it comes from Jakarta, right? Uh, it comes from uh, Jogja Jakarta. Uh, so basically, um, uh, my my style, uh, Guru Aris, who's who's my teacher. Right. His style is a uh, is Wira Yudas. So the t-shirts. It's um Wira Yudas. So basically, um, his a uh, that's actually his family style. Dur actually means like a a warrior who who lives for war. So that's basically the the literal translation of of Wira Yudha. Yeah. And that's actually Guru Aris's who. who Who's my so you're talking kind of a, a central south Java, so it's kind of right in the middle of Java at the bottom. So sounds quite similar. It's actually the the, the second in most bit of Bali. So um, his style is from uh, Jogja, and um, he, but he's done a lot of different styles. My teachers, so um, this is his family style I'm called Kuku Machan, which which means nail of the tiger. So a lot of animal movement as well. It's very tiger-like in its movement. Um, Crambit is quite a popular weapon. It is, is shaped like a tiger's claw, so that's quite a popular weapon in, in Wiri Yudasan. Right, and and what do you say is the more characteristic uh, features of your of your style of Penjaxila? The most the most interesting uh, feature. Or? Yeah, well, well, we which uh, differentiates from other uh, Penjaxila styles. It's a diversity. So I mean, like some styles of Salat can vary quite a lot. You know, some styles of Salat only have punches. You know, some styles of Salat only have kicks. You know, so 
it's like can vary. Some actually, uh, actually, some some people in Indonesia actually try and mix black magic in with it. So they actually try and uh, tap into the dark spirits, and actually, that's all their style is just a spiritual aspect. And you've almost got the light side and the dark side, where you can use good spirits, you can use bad spirits. So it varies quite significantly. So, um, so my my style, uh, which is Guru Arizis style, it basically is very diverse. So it has, you know, all the open and hand stuff, all the art form, all the weapons. It has the, the sports aspect, all the striking, so, um, the spiritual aspect too. So what, what I like about my style is that it's very, very diverse. So you'll see some, some styles of select are only sports-based. Some styles of select are only uh, self-defense-based, you know. So I guess my style is, is quite uh, diverse. It's got a lot of different techniques. No, I don't his own style which he put he's done many different styles of, of silat as well so he's actually combined a lot of different styles and and added to his own style so uh, he made a decision to go in under his style very good because otherwise he'd have, have to stick to a syllabus to a different style where if he in his own style he can actually add more techniques and, and mix techniques together and add on his family style and keep adding to it so so that's why he chose to go with with Wiriyuda and you know he, he actually teaches the army, the special forces, the police in, uh, in Georgia. So he's yeah. teaching, he's actually using it, and the special forces are actually using it in, in, in Georgia today. So it's actually being used in, in real life in, in, in Indonesia. So it's, it's very applicable, it's very practical. And there's some styles of Salat are very um, form based, where you, the, 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 there's a lot of, uh, they're a lot done with a form and they can get in very uh, standard kind of form based movements. but where Yoda doesn't have any standardized forms, it, it, you try to react to your opponent. You try and shape yourself around the opponent. So it's a it's a really a counterattacking style. So I guess in that aspect, it's it's quite different from other styles of Salat. And each styles of Salat has their own kind of unique elements. So I guess I would say that is the the, the standout from Where Yoda. Actually, I have seen some videos from Guru Aris, and his weapon skills are out of his world. He's he's, he's just amazing. Hello. I mean, I, I, you know, I've been out to Thailand, and I've, I've had some trainers over my years. But I mean, Guru Aris was was one of those those people that I actually went out there and met. And I was looking for that kind of you know, kid to uh, the middle of nowhere into the jungle or the kind of uh, the villages, and you, and you learn a really traditional style. And it's it's it didn't disappoint. It actually, you know, really surprised me. And just every, the way he teaches too is very. And he's he's very supporting too. He does supporting and will help you and, and give you kind words of advice. So I quite I quite like that. It, it, the way he uh, he teaches is, is is more supporting. It's not you know yelling or kind of overly, overly formalized. So and he'll give you really personalized support. And you know when I when I went out there and trained, I you know I, I could only stay for a sec to Australia. The, the learning continued, so he kept sending me videos and said, try this and send me videos. So I actually had to learn a lot of videos. And he would need just between, I keep practicing, he keep sending me videos. So, you know, he, he cared about my learning as well. So Awesome. And and uh, he runs uh, Bella Didi Tactics, right? Yeah, that's right. So Bella Didi means uh, self-defense in uh, Indonesian. And uh, tactics is like a, you know, obviously tactics almost like your your SWAT, your special weapons and tactics. So that's that's his, that's his brand that he uses to teach the special forces, which is it's a, it's part of Wira Yoda, but it's it's really a more simple simplified system that you know the army and uh, the special right. forces doesn't have a long time to spend on 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 martial arts. They have to deal with weapons and things like that. So they you know guns, uh, things like that. So basically. It's a it's a more simplified system where your focus is on you know your basic blocks and your basic things like that. And it's better did it act part from Silat Australia or it's a different uh, organization or are linked in some way.
And then basically uh, after I trained with the uh, Aries, I, I came back to Australia and then I expected to find Penchak Salat everywhere, but it, it's really hard to find. It's not very common. Most people haven't heard about it. So uh, I, I felt like I needed to just tell people about it. You know, if, if people don't know what it is, right. never heard of it. That's when I started Penchak Salat Australia. It was just about communicating what Penchak Salat is, what the benefits are. And so that's I started to communicate and I thought I'd start with Australia, just put the message out there and just try and communicate to people what it is. So that's where Penchak Salad Australia really came from. And then, um, yes, yeah, the Belladiri tactics is really just what he uses to actually teach the special forces and the army. So it's that's also part of Rigoda. And Penchak Salad Australia is, has really just come from that need to, to really communicate what Penchak Salad is. Uh, and I focused on, obviously, Australia, but... You know, the, the word is getting out. You've shown interest, and other people from other countries show interest or want to know more about the style. Because, yeah, before I went to Indonesia, I'd never heard about it too, and it's it's yeah. one of those styles that has really flown under the radar. And especially because of its history, I mean, there's not all of, not not all masters in Indonesia want to say, "Hey, I know Penchak Salat because it was underground for a long time," right. and they're almost worried that you know if they right. teach other people, they might try and use it against them. So there is that kind of undercurrent of it, it it doesn't want to necessarily get over popularized but um yeah i mean more people are starting to to pay attention to it and and, and more people probably know what it, what it is now than they did you know five ten years ago right uh it's interesting that you said uh ben is um is still uh, nowadays uh undercover art because i have uh, interviewed another ben teachers and they tell me that in you can be in a ta in a cab in a taxi in, in in Indonesia, and the guy that is driving the cab it's maybe a pender car. He has killed twenty people, and uh, it's uh, it's very underground nowadays. Uh, still an mm -hmm. uh, underground art. What do you think is that? It's because they they fear to. Um, to teach what they know. It's something that it's comes from the, the religion or the very uh, philosophy of the art to stay, you know, undercover? Uh, I think that is uh, some part of it. I mean, some some styles probably do kind of keep it to their, themselves and keep it to their own students and don't really accept outside students. Or you can get styles of Salat for villages or, or families. So, I mean, they, they might keep it to themselves and you know you still have that that kind of a tribal kind of warfare in Indonesia where you know you've got different islands that are still fighting with each other so basically they would keep it to to themselves and they're almost still their mind still almost works like they're still in a war so basically that is <clears throat> one aspect but um one one thing about Indonesia too is that uh Pergawan, so that means uh, the style of a uh, Salat it's all based by the school of Salat so basically where you would is is my school and then because there's over 800 known styles of, of Salat. I mean, there may be people in the jungle walking around on hands and feet with their own style that we don't even know about. So, I mean, because there's so many styles, it right. becomes a bit closed. So people will know their own style and then that's it. And then they don't allow outsiders or, you know, it's, you know, uh, somebody else would be doing their style so they don't communicate and share information they try and themselves. Whereas other countries like Malaysia, you've got, um, it's more sports-based. So a lot, a lot of people... They don't have their own styles. And you can actually, in Malaysia, do uh, Penchak Salat as a sport. You can choose it as an elective subject in school. So it's 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 more common, and right. it's known as Penchak Salat, whereas in Indonesia, people uh, stick to their own styles, and, and they actually train together in their own style, whereas Malaysia, for instance, they they will train uh, Penchak Salat more as a sport. So it's I think that, especially in Indonesia, is one reason why it's a bit more closed off as well. Okay, great. And talking about sports, you are a two-time medalist in Penjaxila Championships in Australia, right? Yes, yeah, so I, I got a silver one year and then I, I got a silver and a bronze uh, another year, so for weapons. So uh, I did individual weapons too and, and got a bronze and I think there may be another year I got a silver as well. So I've you know, been in the top top three and you know, uh, for, for a good few years running when I was competing, I you know, was the second in Australia. So I, you know, I stayed up there and I, I don't know if you know or not, but they, they recently changed the rules. So Penchak Select competition, um, <clears throat> you had to be 35 years or under. So I, I'm actually 38. So I actually, the world championship was when in 2016 was the last time I thought I'd be able to compete internationally. Right. But 
we actually changed the rules very recently. Okay. So um, you can actually be up to 45 years old to compete. Oh. And so I can actually compete again in the World Championship, which I, which I was, wasn't was able to do a few years ago. So And they've actually opened a master's category, so you can, you know, I think up until 60 years old, I think you can compete. And then they have an over 60-year-old or over 65 category as well. So you can you can compete you know, oh, all the way into your awesome. 70s or 80s if you're, if you're fit enough. So um, they've, they've recently changed the rules, and it's so recent that we're even trying to learn the new rules as well. And um, they've actually open a lot of the rules up, like allowing elbows, even elbows, downward to the back, things like that. There's a lot of different new rules that, that, that they've uh, incorporated that is actually going to change the sport and attract a lot of uh, other styles to the, to the competition aspect too. Right, because uh, sometimes when, when we talk about martial arts competitions, uh, we know that there are uh, rules and the martial arts can express uh, their uh, very essence of what they are in in a total dis display, right? Uh, and that would, you mentioned that the allowing pe all, um, people from 65, 60, uh, 40, 45, and allowing to use the elbows, it's, it's more a realistic approach to, to the art, right? Yeah, I mean, like it's, uh, with a Penjax Select, you, you wear a vest, and there's only strikes to the body allowed. So there's no elbows to the face, but you can you can strike the, the body with an elbow. But the, the the rules were very strict, you know, in that you there were no elbows, or you were very it was very strict. You had to attack in a certain way, you know. You couldn't do any more than seven strikes in, in a row. So and there was there was no locking and breaking and no grappling. So it was it was very limited into into what you can do. But you know, with Penchak Select, it's such a diverse style. You've got a lot of stand up locks and breaks and things like that. So um it actually allows you to do that now. So before you couldn't actually lock the arm and, and submit, but now you can actually do a standing arm bar in competition, which wasn't allowed before. So, you know, people who are uh, more versed in self-defense can actually get involved in sport and use locking and breaking to actually submit in the in competition now too. So that's opened up a lot more techniques, which, you know, for sport, you do have to obviously stop yourself from doing a lot of techniques. I mean, sport's good in a way because you have to put yourself to the test. You're, you know, you have the fear, you have the adrenaline, you've got to cope with that. So in that aspect, it's, it's, it's good to experience that and have to overcome it and stay right. calm. But you have to cut a lot of techniques out of your style to, to do competition. But they're allowing a lot more techniques now, which, which you know, is going to be good for the sport. And I know that uh, the International Pain Jackslat Federation Association it's, has been trying to uh, include uh, Pain uh, into the Olympics. How, how do you see... Do you see that happening in the future or it's a long road? Yeah, well, that, a lot of reason why they changed the rules is because of that. So, um, you know, they the rules wanting to be more in line with sports uh, in the Olympics and obviously to make it more exciting too. So, um, you know, and, right. you know, if you get a lot of different people that are allowed to use different techniques, you'll get a lot more people involved. So um, the, the rules, I think, will, will cater more and be more attractive to the Olympics. So, you know, it could be 10, 15, 20 years, who knows, I mean, but... That, that what they're doing is on the road to the Olympics. They want it to be recognised as as an Olympic sport. So right. I mean, in Australia, in Australia at the moment, it's not recognised as a sport. So basically, you know, if athletes from Australia want to go and, and compete in the World Championship, there's no government uh, support. You basically have to pay for yourself as an athlete. So I mean, obviously, if it becomes an Olympic sport, all, all that will change. The sport will become more attractive. It'll grow, and you know, in time, it may be selected as an Olympic sport. Uh, I mean, it just, I think last year it was accepted into the Asian Asian Games. So, um, yeah, so that was the first time it's been accepted to the Asian Games. So, um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's on the road there. And obviously, hopefully it'll be good for the sport if, if it does. Yeah, because uh, um, it, uh, martial arts like Taekwondo and <laughs> Karate have, has been trying, well, Taekwondo, uh, it has been included as an Olympic sport in the past two Olympics. But karate is still trying to, to get into the Olympics. Uh, wh why do you think the uh, the Olympic Committee is so hard with uh, combat sports? I think there's just there's just so many of them, aren't there? It's kind of um, you know you start letting a couple in, and then you 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 know you have a few hundred more you know, asking to become an Olympic sport. I mean, it's they've probably got a lot to choose from. I mean, right. I mean. Maybe in the future they'll start accepting more martial arts and uh, more diversity of martial arts. But yeah, I guess 
the Olympics is the ultimate, so it's probably very competitive um, to actually get yourselves in, into the Olympics. And the Olympics games are planned so far in, in advance that, you know, even if you do get accepted, you could be talking about 10 to 15 years so you can actually do it in the Olympics. So, I mean, they're planning that far ahead. So, And do you think it's linked to the popularity of the, of the sport? Because uh, if you take the case of, of softball and baseball, which is popular in Latin America and the United States, they were an Olympic sport, but they were banned. And they were um, took out of the um, Olympic calendar. So uh, it's, do you think something about popularity about the sport? Because the Penjaxulat is very popular in, let's say, in the Southeast Asia and the United States uh, some in, in Europe, but not so much in Latin America or, uh, let's say, Africa. Have to create programs to actually help athletes actually prepare and give them facilities to actually train. So um, it's obviously quite hard when you've got you know countries like Indonesia who been accepted second world war. They've got all the facilities to train, and they're obviously they've taken it to such a high level that you know it's very hard. Malaysia, so I mean. First of all, like you say, popularity of it becomes more popular. But then obviously we can actually you know, have more opportunities to actually train and, and really raise the bar when it comes to competing against the, the big countries like Indonesia who, who usually dominate. Right. And, and, and mm -hmm. uh, you are working to, to, to help Australia to build a national team. Are you involved with the um, Penjaxula Australian Federation in some way? Yes, you've got, you got the Australian uh, um, you know, I'm involved with that, and I, you know, I, I, I talk to them a lot. And you know, they arrange uh, competitions. They have a, a competition in a, in a, uh, a state-based competition, so yeah, they'll have a Queensland titles, for instance. So, um, and then um, they'll have a national titles, so they'll have a, a titles uh, once a year for Australia. Right. And then what, when you compete in the national titles, if you if you perform well, you can then get invited to to represent Australia in the Australian team at, at, at a World Championship. So. And that's every two years. So basically, uh, you know, you're involved uh, nationally uh, in competitions, and then you can get invited uh, to actually compete internationally and represent your country. Awesome. Oh uh, well, Guru, we are running out of time, but I I want to ask you a last question. Uh, how, how COVID has affected uh, training for gym owners or martial arts uh, gym owners? Uh, training with 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 your students. I mean, it's have. You, can you do it online? It's been working kind of the same way, but uh, by the internet. You mean with you mean with COVID, like uh, what's been happening? Or yeah, because uh, we are, well, for example, we are under lockdown here in Argentina, still after six months from uh, the pandemia, from the pandemic started. So, uh, are you able to to teach personally, or you're still? Uh, uh, keeping some distance from your students. Yep. So we were actually training at a, at a gym and, um, you know, they, the gym closed for a while and then, um, you know, training was, was a bit harder and then they did start allowing, things started getting better in, in Queensland. So the gym started letting people in, but then, you know, we were getting told off for not social distancing enough, but obviously martial arts is a hard, hard sport to actually social distance because it's a contact sport. So we, we were trying to make an effort to actually do that, but gyms were under such strict, you know, instructions from the government that they right. actually, you know, we actually ended up stopping training at the gym and, you know, we'll train in a park instead. And, you know, we did have to actually obviously be careful and try to do what we can, whether we, you know, focus on the form uh, aspect or whether we focus on uh, kicks to, to, to stay further away from each other. But, you know, Queensland is <clears throat> getting a lot better and they do recognise that, sport uh you know is good for obviously physical mental health so you know they are supporting kind of sports to to get back into it as long as you take the right precautions and, and be safe so i mean it has been um harder to train but um also the world championship was already supposed to have happened by now but they've postponed that to uh next uh i think june or july and 
who knows it may be postponed even more so you know they're obviously seeing that athletes it's harder for them to prepare so um we'll see we'll see what happens you know we'll keep training and hopefully things get better but who knows right uh, and finally good i, I want to thank you for being here today it's been a real pleasure i've, I've been learning a lot from you and I want you to tell us uh, where people from Latin America can find your academy, where are your links, your social media? Yeah, so my, my website is uh, Silat Australia. So you can basically go to silataustralia.com. Um, you know, I've got a few videos on there. And like you said, we have online training too, because uh, it is hard to train face to face sometimes. And a lot of people are learning in different states. So I do have online training and and Vimeo has been a good platform to facilitate the online training through video tutorials. So um, if they go to saladaustralia.com, they'll be able to see uh, the website and they'll be able to see some online training options. And and just, I guess, um, that from there, you can see we've got Facebook pages and um, YouTube, things like that. You just search for Penchek Salad Australia and you'll be able to find us on social media or, or the website. Awesome. Thank you very much, Guru. And I hope we can meet you again uh, in another interview in the future. So uh, it's been great having you and I wish you a wonderful, well, it's in like 9 uh, p.m. In, in Australia. Yeah, yep, it's well, uh, near 9 p.m. Uh, yep, a uh, bit, bit later than you, early morning. I, I wish you a, a good night. You too, thanks for having me. Thank you, thank you, Guru. See, See you soon. Yeah. See you later. Bye.